years. And that name, whose art was seen only in newspapers and fashion magazines. Recently, a retrospective of his life's work opened in France, allowing the public a rare peek at the roots of the Prince of Pop. Where did Picasso come from? There's no Michelangelo coming from Pittsburgh. If art is a tip of the iceberg, I'm the part sinking below. I think that Andy Warhol had a fantastic influence on the arts, obviously, of our time, but he had a fantastic influence as well on the advertising, the publicity, the marketing. So for a, for a modern businessman, Andy Warhol is a very important man. Images, 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 images. I think it's very, very original. And even when you see it now and you've seen them a million times there, you know, Mao wallpaper and Elizabeth Taylor and Marilyn and Jackie and well, it's, uh, it's my youth and uh, quite a few other people's as well. I mean, you know, it's, it's marked as... To add a little atmosphere to the exhibit, the curators recreated the environment in which Warhol lived and worked. It included a New York City street scene from the 1960s and a portion of his famous studio called The Factory. In its time, The Factory became as notorious for the people who hung out there as the artwork Warhol created in it. We were free, 100% free to do what we wanted to do. And that was great at the time. Of course, I've learned since that, you know, freedom with that wisdom is thraldom. You know that word, thraldom? It means bondage. Others present, not quite as eager to do away with their uh, thraldom to the past, were former Velvet Underground members Lou Reed and John Cale. Both recently recorded an album together, paying homage to Warhol, their former mentor. When you're growing up in a small town, bad skin, bad eyes, gay and fatty, people look at you funny. When you're in a small town, I learned a lot of things from Andy. Um, it's not something for there's just so many things that impressed me about him. It's uh, his ability to look at things from a different angle, uh, his ability to see things and seemingly places you wouldn't normally look, things that would bring a whole time period to life. OK, you're on. You can't talk. That's all. That's all. Just stay there for three minutes, right? Yeah. Why don't you sit right over there? You'll do a movie portrait. I'll turn the camera on. To many, the highlight of the day wasn't the Warhol exhibit at all, but rather the unexpected reunion of the Velvet Underground, whose members performed together for the first time in 22 years. They played several songs from the Warhol-inspired album, Songs for Drella. I really miss you, really miss your mind. I haven't heard ideas like that in such a long, long time. <laughs> The four of us have not been in one place, you know, let alone on stage. And also we had not intended to play today. Lou and John were going to uh, do a couple of songs. If I thought I was going to play, I'd have brought a guitar. I like lots of people around me, but don't kiss hello, and please don't touch. It's been over two years since Andy Warhol passed away, yet his popularity as a cultural figure has continued to grow by leaps and bounds. Ultraviolet offered a somewhat pessimistic explanation of this phenomenon. I think we live at a time of worshipping. People worship images, worship people. We live in a star system. So, you know, that's what they go for. I mean, like this part over there, they're worshipping that part. No, well, they do. It's made in gold. It's the golden calf of the Egyptian. And you know what happened to civilization that fell into worship? What happened to them? They all perish. We're heading for perdition before the Holocaust and the nuclear war.
On the brighter side, with the band still playing, you could almost imagine a very proud, yet bemused Andy Warhol looking down upon the whole event and smiling. Friends have said to lock the door, watch out for who comes through that door. They said the factory must change. But I don't. Thanks, Andy Warhol.